Yep, and um, it, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I, I think Eric gets a little bit of the better version here in the post-board games. I think the, his copy of Duress is very important, and second copy of Dragon Master Outcast is, is great here. All right, well, Jeskai Black Mirror here. Game three, this is for six endo. Eric Smith versus Jonathan Lacker. Eric Smith is on the left, former Invitational Champion versus John Lacker on the right. John was on the play. Two lands to start off with, though. No Jace on his side. We'll see if there's a Jace on Eric's side. He's going to crack two fetch lands. And that will be Vryn's Prodigy. Though, in this matchup, it seems difficult for this guy to survive. It, it's rare. I, occasionally it does because, you know, you get rid of some of the cheaper removal uh, on occasion in the post-board games. It, but it also just sets the stage for Ojatai's command to be very threatening later on. So even if the Jace dies, it's not the end of the world here for Smith. And if it happens to stick, uh, that's, that's excellent. We go over to Lacker. He plays the third land. They are all three fetch lands. It's two Bloodstained Mires and a Flooded Strand. So it is possible for he can get two basics and a battle land. So that should put together whatever spell he wants to play here. Yeah, he can get something like Plains Island, Sunken Hollow, or sorry, Plains Mountain, Sunken Hollow, and be fine. Right. So it's Bloodstained Mire. Looks like Bloodstained Mire for Mountain, Bloodstained Mire for Swamp, and then Flooded Strand can get Prairie Stream. So if it's a Crackling Doom he wants, for example, he has enough mana to do this. But he cannot cast Madness Rider as he has a Swamp in play. Yes, that's true. Your, I, I think he could have fetched differently if he wanted Mantis Rider. Your ideal setup is, uh, and uh, you know, there's other considerations, and depending on how your fetch lands work, you can't always do it, but you like to have Plains, Mountain, Sunken Hollow that allows you to cast any Jeskai spell or any Mardu spell. That usually gets your mana going. Well, his play was a turn three Tassiger the Golden Fang. So now you get to have both these two graveyard creatures kind of square off against each other. It's an active Jace on Eric's side, whereas it's a very early Tassiger on Jonathan's side. And with five toughness, Tassiger seems reasonably difficult to remove, actually. Yeah, there's one copy of Roast in Smith's sideboard. I don't know if he brought it in necessarily. Uh, and he has one copy of Ultimate Price that may or may not be here as well. But this is not the easiest threat to remove. Crackling Doom would be the ideal here. Yeah, on Eric's side, he goes ahead and loots with Jace, then fetches. Going to lead off on Duress. And we'll see what Lacker's working with. He has... Kolagon's Command, Crackling Doom, Crackling Doom, Prairie Stream Island. And part of the reason I like Lacquer going for a fast Tassiker in that spot is because Smith opened up on Plains and Island, meaning that there is no threat of Crackling Doom the next turn anyway. Goes and takes the Kolagon's Command, so two lands and two Crackling Dooms on Lacquer's side. But he does have that Tassiker in play. As we draw, and the draw for Lacquer is Dig Through Time. Card that, that works pretty well alongside Tassiker. Play for Eric. Well, after the duress was a Soulfire Grandmaster, and he passes the turn. If Jace survives till next turn, it will be able to flip, and it looks like it should survive based on the fact that all Lacquer has is Crackling Dooms. So he'll go to work on Eric's life total. That will put Eric down to 13. Let's see if Jonathan wants to just fire off the Crackling Doom immediately. He'll let Eric untap. And Jace activate on Eric's side. Here's a loot. Draws a dual land. And that's the land number four, too, which Smith did not have before. Yeah, Smoldering Marsh. Looks like he may even discard Dragon Master Outcast. It's a ways off right now. But it's good in the matchup. Yeah, but it, it's something where if you cast it on your own turn, your opponent has a number of ways to respond to it. There's fewer ways to respond to it if you're doing it at the end of your opponent's turn via Ojatai's command. And with Smith missing land drops anyway, uh, he seems a far way away from having to worry about that card. Well, here's Jace flipping into a Planeswalker. Soulfire Grandmaster will attack. Lacquer taking the damage, so it evens up at 15 apiece. So is Lacquer, he's saving the Crackling Dooms? Smith might cast something better. And there's also the option of Lacquer just using Tassiker's activated power if Smith doesn't put anything better on the table. Sure. Land number four for Eric. His hand, Dig Through Time, Mastery of the Unseen, Ojatai's Command, and Tassiger. Can leave up Ojatai's Command, and then would also have the option to Dig Through Time. Yeah, 
and see what he wants to do with Jace. At the same time, there's some appealing plays with Jace. He can shrink Tassiger. That's what he's going to go for. So he could also flash back a Duress. Maybe he can do that next turn, though. Tassiger activation. With Dig Through Time in hand, there's not a huge rush for Smith, for Smith to really do anything. He can simply dig at the end of Lacquer's turn if Lacquer doesn't produce anything worthy of Ojatai's command. So the Tassiger mill Dispel and Surge of Righteousness. Eric gave him back the Surge. And here's Tassiger again, going to Jace. Knocks Jace down to four. Remember, Tassiger is a 2-5 from the Jace. I believe Lacquer just passing the turns. Now we'll see Eric perhaps make a play on end step here. I think we're going to see Dig Through Time from Smith. And we will. Dig Through Time cast. Four cards exiled. It's really showing off the power of Jace. Tassiger is such a great late game card, but in the Tassiger versus Jace fight, you almost feel as though Jace is winning this one. Assuming that, you know, both players have stuff to do with their mana, I'd rather be on the Jace side of it. Tassiger will be more powerful in spots where we're both just on empty, and Tassiger can rebuild all by himself. Jace can't do that to the nearly the same extent, but uh, Jace is a little bit smoother. Yeah. Tassiger is strong here as a 4-5. Yeah, the body definitely matters. Eric keeping pace. He only found one land off the dig through time, but has really his choice of second spell. It looks like he'll take a land. And we'll see. Full grip, though, for Eric. Draw was a flooded strand. May have been an utter end on Eric's side, so he has an answer for Tassiger. Jace will give flashback to Duress. Eric will start on a Duress. Gets to see... Crackling Doom, two Crackling... If it resolves, it'll be two Crackling Dooms, a Surge of Righteousness among the targets he can take. And we'll see just what it is. If, if Jonathan has no more responses, he may... He could task her in response. He'll just let it resolve. It's a dig through time, two Crackling Dooms, and a Surge of Righteousness. Yeah, I, I think Smith definitely just wants to take the dig through time out of this hand. He's got a, a much better late game at this point. Remember, he also has Ojatai's command alongside the Dragon Master Outcast in his graveyard, too. So he has that trump. He might be able to sneak into play soon. So all he wants to prevent Lacquer from doing is finding a spell that matters. Smith can easily weather the storm of a couple removal spells. So just take away some of the late game trumps. Soulfire Grandmaster swings in, and Eric goes for Mastery of the Unseen. He knows there's no counter. And he just has so many great mana sinks here, whether it's Soulfire Grandmaster's ability or Master of the Unseen. Plays Mastery there. That gives Eric or Jonathan opportunity to Crackling Doom away the Soul Fire. Eric will take two. Jonathan can get some hits in with Tassiger. Coming up now that the Crackling Doom also took care of, of the Jace. But Eric, you're right, he has Mastery in play. He still has Negate left over in hand. It still seems like a good spot for him. Yep. And Lacquer's remaining hand is Crackling Doom Surge of Righteousness. Two kill spells. And Eric unlikely to give him anything other than kill spells off Tassiger activations. <laughs> Eric draws for turn. No land six. He'll pass. Tassiger will activate. In response, it looks like Eric is going <laughs> to Crackling Doom. I was about to say, th this does not seem like a good spot to be... <laughs> for Ojatai's command. Yep. Just get back your dragon uh, outcast in the face of multiple removal spells. On well, here, the task of activation will resolve a lot of options here. Eric decides to give Jonathan back Crackling Doom. Yeah, all he wants to do is cut Lacquer off of card advantage at this point. He's got a much better late game. He's got a lot of trumps. And if Lacquer has a couple removal spells in hand, that doesn't matter all that much with Smith having Master the Unseen in play. Yeah, he's doing a great job of making... Of, leaving Jonathan with kill spells, and then having a game plan that simply doesn't rely on kill spells. And now he goes to work, a manifest off Mastery of the Unseen. Swing will put Lacquer down to eight. Eric, I believe, with a seven-card hand here. Double negate, not even playing Jace, just, just no reason to make any plays. Yeah, I think Smith will wait until he has land number six before he's doing anything else. There's no reason to put the shields down, and putting Jace on the table isn't that much better than just activating Master of the Unseen anyway. So just put the ball back in Lacquer's court, respond to any play that he makes, and if he doesn't do anything that's worth your mana, go so, ahead and activate Master of the Unseen. 
So the position has forced Jonathan to start using his kill spells on mastery tokens, which means that Eric will slowly build up card advantage that way. Now, the one thing we can say that Lacker has going is he's up eight lands to five on Eric. And so is it possible here, you know, are there some big late game threats he can draw to to maybe push this advantage? Well, uh, the, the issue is that he's playing against Ojatai's command and negate in hand, so I just don't know what cards exist that he could he could draw that, that Smith does, doesn't have covered. Right, I mean, no matter what he drew, he'd have to fight through one counter spell, right? Yeah. Here's Jace Vryn's Prodigy. See if that's enough. I mean, he can overload, right? If he has a great non-creature card here, we see Eric's going to counter with Ojatai's command. If Jonathan said a follow-up Mastery of the Unseen right now, then we might be in business. Yeah, but... but Lacker's also just not really been doing a whole lot the last couple of turns. Smith has given him a variety of removal spells off the Tasseker. I think Smith sends weakness in that spot. Yes, it's risky to Ojatai's command the Jace, but he kind of needs to get it out of his hand. And I think he sensed that Lacker just didn't have a lot going on. Yeah, Lacker draws, plays the land, passes the turn. Eric's going to double fetch on end step. Looks like he'll make another mastery token. Doesn't have to worry about burn either. He has two negates to sit back on. And... Master the Unseen will manifest again for Eric Smith. So n now he gets to untap with a 2-2. He has Lacquer down to 7. Negate, Negate, Utter End, Jace, Fiery Impulse all waiting in his hand. He'll attack with the Manifest. Lacquer will go for the third Crackling Doom. And what a show of strength. J Eric's going to go ahead and negate this one. Yep, and just kind of wants to be doing something with his mana. Still has a negate left over. He, he can afford to be a little aggressive here, try to close out this game. And I like this play. So despite five cards in his yard, he could have made Tassiger there. But what, what I believe is happening is that if he made Tassiger and Lacker went for Ojatai's command, I don't think Eric actually wanted to spend a negate on it, so he, might, he, just, he just didn't. Well, on top of that, he knows that... He knows that Lacquer has a copy of Surge of Righteousness in hand, so there's no rush to get a black threat on the table. So th there's a variety of reasons not to not to make a move there. You saw Eric make a move with an end step, oh, trying to get end step Dragon Master outcast. That was then completely disregarded by Jonathan. He exiled it, but he's still down to three. Now Eric remakes a Jace. Jonathan with another land is no help. And for Eric Smith, he takes down game three off the back of a well-crafted control plan behind Mastery of the Unseen. Smith definitely knew what mattered in the matchup. Um, use his removal spells to get cards from Lacquer. Lacquer was only able to use removal spells to stem the tide, and with Lacquer flooding out a little bit, not being able to get any of his major sources of card advantage to resolve, uh, it was only a matter of time before Smith did him in with Master of the Unseen.